Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Keisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important parts of your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin tones, it can be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are putting CeraVe's Facial Moisturizing Lotion SPF 30 for normal to oily skin to the test to see if it's black girl approved. If you missed the last episode, it will be linked in the cards above. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you get updated every single time we put another SPF in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm rating this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind, and at the end, I'm going to give it a rating out of 10. A little bit about the brand. I'm sure CeraVe is one of those brands that really need no introduction. It has truly been trending in the past couple of years and for such a basic brand it's crazy how much people love it, myself included. Um, it's one of those brands that are catered to people with sensitive skin. So if you're someone who suffers from acne or you just have sensitivities to a lot of fragrances, to a lot of active ingredients, this is stripping everything back to the bare bones and it will really help you to to replenish your skin and rebuild your skin barrier and that's some of the reasons why people love this brand this company is not cruelty free so they do test on animals so if that is something that you are trying to steer clear of this will definitely not be the one for that another thing about CeraVe that I think is really important to point out is that a lot of skincare brands they will say that their products are dermatologically tested or tested by dermatologists which actually means basically nothing it means that a, a dermatologist could have literally just thrown the product at a wall and technically it's considered tested. CeraVe's products are actually developed with dermatologists and they're dermatologists approved and recommended and that honestly it has a little bit more weight in my book when I'm looking at these products. All right, so this is the CeraVe Facial Moisturizing Lotion with SPF 30 for normal to oily skin. It says it's supposed to help replenish your skin's natural protective moisture barrier. And some of the highlight ingredients here are ceramides, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid. We'll get into the product a little bit later, but for now, let's start with the application. Let's talk about the packaging. So CeraVe is one of those brands that don't really focus too much on the packaging of their products. It's not the selling feature. It's really you're getting what you're paying for, which honestly I do enjoy, especially if you're just getting a basic product. You want it to be packaged basically as well. There's a lot to be said about products that are packaged like with frills and, and super expensive and high end, where you're in that case you're paying for the packaging itself rather than the actual qualities of the 
product. As for the pump, I haven't really had an issue with it getting stuck or with the pump not working or anything like that or any spillage, so it's totally fine for me. It's also nice and good to be said that it has a lock feature, so if you are going to be carrying this with you in your purse or whatever the case may be, you can twist lock it and it should help prevent the product from coming out as you're carrying it with you. Let me just put this down. <laughs> So the packaging is useful, it's compact, no issues with it, it's gonna get a point for me. So the way that I like to determine whether my products are worth the price is by looking at the daily average cost. This is essentially how much product you're getting, how much product you need to use on a daily basis versus the price. So you know how long it's gonna last you and whether it's worth actually paying the price for it. Now this is extremely important for sunscreen because there is a specific amount of sunscreen that you should be wearing to actually get the SPF factor that is on the bottle. Generally speaking, you should be applying around two finger lengths of product on your face and neck. That is around 0.04 fluid ounces. I like to put in fluid ounces because generally a lot of products come in fluid ounces. This product retails on the Shoppers Drug Mart website currently for $17.99 and it comes with 89 milliliters. So if you're applying this once a day, it's gonna last you for 75 days. Now let's see if it's worth the price. So it's $17.99 divided by 75 days, which is equal to 0.23 cents per day. So what does this actually mean? When you're looking at daily cost averaging, it's not enough to just look at one product. You have to look at multiple side by side and see which one is a better value. I will be posting a summary recap video once I review 10 SPFs to put them side by side and see which one is the better bang for your buck. So make sure to go ahead and click that notification bell so you get updated when I post that review. So for now, we're gonna give that a point. Let's take a look at the ingredients. The rule of thumb when it comes to skincare ingredients is that the shorter the ingredient list, the better. And when it comes to CeraVe's products, because they pretty much strip everything back to the basics, you're definitely gonna find that here. First, we're gonna look at some of the moisturizing ingredients and then we're gonna to go to the active sunscreen ingredients. So this does have water as its main ingredient. It has a starch as well. And I noticed this with the Fenty SPF as well, they do have a starch. This is gonna to help to keep the skin a little bit more mattified. So the fact that this is for oily skin, this is essentially what's giving you that mattified or true to skin like finish. It does have satiral alcohol, a very good fatty alcohol, which is amazing at moisturizing the skin. It has um, the Ceramide AP, NP, and EOP, which are great cell builders for your skin cells. Based on the ingredient list, this product does combine both chemical and physical UV filters to help give you an even coverage against UV rays, um, which honestly, in my opinion, is the way to go. Traditionally, we've looked at SPF in terms of chemical and physical SPFs as being one is reflective and one absorbs, but we are now seeing that this distinction is not quite so black and white. Both physical and chemical SPFs both reflect and absorb um, UV rays into the skin. So yes, they both are absorbed into the bloodstream regardless if you're using physical filters or chemical filters. It's not so black and white. So the fact that they're using them together I think is really effective in terms of making sure you have an even coverage of sun protection. SPF 30 means that you're getting around 97% of protection from the UVB rays, so the burning of the skin, and the broad spectrum indicates that it covers both UVA and UVB radiation. So decent coverage there. This will also get a point for me. I am one of those people that generally don't enjoy physical SPFs. The reason being is because I don't like the way that they apply. And as you guys saw in this video, it was pretty difficult to blend this out into my skin. One thing about this product is I do find it quite thick and dry in texture. So when you're blending it out, it's it's not like it has a watery texture or anything like that. It's just very dry, which is a weird thing to apply on your face. You know, this is not unlike any other physical SPFs that I've tried. This is a pretty basic one. So this is normal for physical SPFs, and this is why I don't generally like them. Um, but I did find as well with that, it made it extremely difficult to blend out. Um, I think with this one, you have to be very quick in terms of your application. 
because as soon as a product starts to dry down and you start to move it again, it starts to pill. And I saw that it pilled a lot in my hairline, especially here on my jaw and anywhere that I tried to blend it out further. And when it did dry down, it had these little patches on my skin, like it wasn't completely blended out properly and there wasn't really much that I could do about it. Now, one thing to note, if you are applying this SPF while your skin is dry, this is what you're gonna experience. Now, I didn't wanna just write this off because I obviously I have preconceived notions about physical SPFs. I really wanted to give this a fair test. So I tried applying it in a few different ways to see what would work. If you apply this product while your skin is still wet, it's a lot easier to blend out. I think that this is important because with the gel moisturizer, or even if you add like a toner or some type of spray on your face before doing this, it's gonna pull the product deeper into the skin. And so I think that if you're going to use this, definitely apply it on dampened skin. You can even just add more water to your hands and put it on. But with that being said, I don't know if adding more water is gonna make the product not as effective or it's gonna break down or give you not as great a coverage as it would if you just applied it. So I'm not quite sure. Um, that's one of the ways that I found it applied better, but I don't know if that is degrading the actual coverage that you need to get. In terms of finish, I did mention already that it has a very drying finish to the skin. And if you are somebody who is normal to combination or dry skin, this is definitely not the one for you. You're gonna love this if you have oily skin because the oil is going to give you that moisture factor that's gonna allow it to sit better on your skin. Yeah, it just made my skin feel very dry. Like I didn't feel like there was any suppleness to my skin or any sheen. I love a good sheen on my face. Um, so I, per that's my personal opinion though. So for this one, I will give it a 0.5. It is for a specific person, but as this is my review, I'm giving it a 0.5. <laughs> Reapplication. Listen, this is not <laughs> the product to be reapplying on your face unless you're carrying around a spray bottle. Because the base layer already gave a lot of patchiness to the skin, and like I said, once it's dry and you start to move it around again, it is not a good occasion. I did not like how this reapplied on my face whatsoever. I thought it was extremely difficult to blend out. I just did not like reapplying this. And I didn't even attempt applying this over makeup because I just didn't like the way that, uh, this sounds so negative. If you're someone who has really sensitive skin and nothing else works, I get that this is for you. I personally did not like the way that it applied on my skin, which is why I'm gonna be giving this a point two white cast. So at Physical Sunscreens, the biggest bone I have to pick with them is the fact that they leave this white, purplish tint to your skin. And it's not flattering for anybody. But honestly, I was a little bit shocked at how little it had a white cast. Obviously it was there, and the more that you apply it, you're gonna get more of a white cast, but I was expecting it to be a little bit more casted than it was. Granted, I still looked a little bit ghostly and a little bit sickly, and it did not fade and it did not go away, but it wasn't as white casting as I um, initially thought it was gonna be and as I have experienced physical SPFs B. And that's probably because it does have a blend of the physical and the chemical SPF, so it may help with some of that white cast. Obviously, it was still visible, and I don't like to have white cast at all on my face, because most of the day, I actually don't wear makeup half of the time. And if I do, it's very minimal makeup, and it's not all over my face. So when I wear SPF, I wanna make sure that I don't have to wear a lot of makeup. It's going to get a point four for me in terms of white cast. It's there, it's not crazy, but it's there, and I would have to wear full coverage makeup to cover it, so fragrance. <laughs> now, most of you guys know that I am not a big fan of fragrance when it comes to my products. I like very little scent, if anything is there at all, or I like fragrant free products. This one, of course, is fragrance free, so there is nothing to worry about there, which obviously if you have sensitive skin, fragrance is typically something you run from anyways. And it's gonna get a point for me. Under makeup. So I did mention how patchy my skin was after applying this SPF and it did dry down. And I noticed myself using a little bit more makeup than I usually do on my skin for two reasons. Number one, to cover the cast. Um, there is some sort of cast with this product and it's definitely something that I would not 
personally feel comfortable wearing outside on a daily basis. Maybe if I was going on a hike or something where I'm, you know, bound to look crazy and I don't care, um, that's a different situation. But on a general day-to-day -day basis, I don't want to look like my skin is ivory. Um, just not just not a good look for me, you know what I'm saying? When I was using um, concealer specifically, um, I did find that the patchiness really clung to my concealer. It clung to my foundation and I really had a very hard time blending out my foundation into my sunscreen. It didn't leave my skin oily at all. I have a very oily forehead and oiliness around here and it was fine for that too. So it did not like fall off my face or anything like that. I think that that was fine. So we'll give this one a 0.4. In terms of flashback, you can definitely see that my face is a bit lighter than my chest. That is a given. So there is a little bit of a flashback, but I don't feel like this cast is that bad, to be honest. Um, it's obviously still noticeable, but it's not crazy. You can see it on my neck a lot. So for cast, I don't think it's 100% like striking or anything, but it obviously is still somewhat noticeable. So I'm gonna give this a 0.5. So overall, this product gets a 6.4 out of 10 for me. Is this sunscreen black girl approved? Yes and no. And I mean, there's a lot of other issues in there. <laughs> Um, but it's for a specific type of person. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know have you ever tried this SPF. I would love to hear your thoughts or any other SPFs that you want to see me review. Leave them down below. Go ahead and click over here to see some of my previous videos. Remember to stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, because I will see you lovely ladies and gents in the next video. Bye!